are keeping well, keeping safe, and doing the best that you can, especially if you're being quarantined or you're working remotely, and you're just doing the best so that you can also help those that are around you in light of the recent events. My name is Prosper Tarubinga, and I am coming to you live from Live Long Digital, where we basically help small to medium businesses start, scale, and grow their business um, You know, using... Uh, digital marketing strategies and also uh, mainly search engine optimization. Now, let's face it, everyone is in dire straits at the moment. Nobody actually knows what's going on. Nobody knows what they should do or what they should uh, stop doing. And I think it's um, it's that time where it's very very important, um, you know, for somebody to step up and say, "Hey, listen." We're all going to be going past this. This is only, um, you know, it, it was bound to happen for those that are well prepared for it. I mean, let's let's face let's face it. If at the start of the year somebody would have come and told you that we're going to be totally changing the way we're doing business, we're going to be totally changing the way we connect with our customers uh, by March, you would tell them, "Hey, go and smoke more of whatever you're smoking right now." But a lot of people have started realizing that it is now imperative for them to really consolidate their online presence, their online branding, and especially if they want to be found by their customers, um, you know, using search engine optimization. You know what I mean? We, we're there now. You know what I mean? That's where we exactly are. Um, most businesses might close. Most businesses might actually flourish in this time. So it then depends where do you want to be when all it's said and done? Because look at it, naturally navigating this new terrain is not going to be easy for a lot of people that have been used to doing business, maybe face to face. It's not going to be easy for people that had no specific online presence or some sort of branding, which was going to help them, um, you know, find customers because as business people, our main role is to continuously find customers or buy customers that we're going to be servicing, and that's how profit is made. Okay, so um, everywhere you look, um, it's 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 dire. Everything is closing. Um, you know, everything is shutting down. Events that maybe were supposed to be attended to, um, you know, nowhere to be seen. Um, theme parks, stores, life as we know it is going to change pretty much after that. And it's during these uncertain times of, um, what do they call it, social distancing. Many of us are seeking uh, a digital connection. Many of us are seeking um, ways to connect and interact with other people or continuously buy services, um, you know, just so that they can get by. And they're looking for digital alternatives um, of whatever it is that we we're using prior. Now, this is a really good time for businesses that are offering services, especially on the online space. Um, this is a really good time for businesses that, um, you know, have consolidated their online presence and people already know, like, and trust who they are and can literally find them in a sea of me too uh, practitioners out there. But it's not going to be easy. And let's face it, all right? Search engine optimization or how you're going to be found online is going to be really, really crucial to drive traffic to your website, especially when people are maybe in quarantine or something like that. So, like I'm saying, let's really face it, you know, um, what we have been encountering as a business is people coming to us asking, how should I be paying for this service? Um, what is the right way? How should you know, how should I be charged, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm going to try within this video, um, you know, to, to, to explain the three sort of ways that we as a business charge and which I think um, a lot of people are also doing out there. You know what I mean? Because as a business or as individuals, we are going to be looking for ways that are going to be cheaper for us to reach our clients and also, uh, you know, stay in business without, um, you know, um, you know, sending ourselves broke or actually sending ourselves going out of business. So like I was saying, let's face it, search engine optimization is one of those essential driving factors that is probably not going to be touched um, in, in, in a very long time because search engine optimization is a strategy and it's essential to continue. If you're already doing your SEO to continue working on it, because as we all know, SEO is a zero sum game. All right. 
um, for you to be ranking on top, somebody has to be losing. So you don't want to let go of the positions that you already have. You don't want to let go of the momentum that you've already gathered um, just because of this little speed hump that has come um, in and of its way. You know, and, 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 and a lot of times when we're speaking to maybe um, SEO um, agencies that, that, that work in this space or people that are doing SEO, when the subject of pricing is brought up, a lot of people would just answer you and say, well, it totally depends on your situation, you know? And as a business person, you might not be aware of what it actually depends on, you know? What does it actually depend on, you know? Why can there be just a clear answer or maybe just one ballpark figure so that everybody knows and understands what it is that they're supposed to be paying? And I understand from the part of being a business person, it might be very frustrating. You know what I mean? The reason is because SEO really has a lot of variables and some agencies don't tackle most of them. There's the on-page SEO and the off-page SEO. And there's one way that I usually make my customers have an understanding of what it is that they're going to be, um, you know, going through when we work um, together on the SEO side of things. There's two things you have to understand about SEO. That's one, the optimization of the website and two, the authority that the website has in order for Google to, 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 to pass on um, that, that website as a credible website for people uh, to get information from. All right. In the mind of your customer, your customer thinks they're getting the information from Google, but we all know that Google is getting that information from people's websites. So what does that mean for you as a business owner? It means you have to optimize your site in such a way that Google understands what you do, who you do it for, and where you do it from. All right. And once you've done that, you need to also give Google the confidence to show you to their um, to whoever is going to be typing with the certain authority that vouches to say you have the credibility and they're not just going to be sending, um, you know, people to a wall you know, on, 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 on a street or to a van that, um, that says free candy and people, um, probably going to be, um, you know, ripped off or something like that. So those are the sort of variables that you should be looking at while you're dealing, especially with SEO. And that's why a lot of agencies have different ways of charging. And I'm going to try, um, to maybe explain a few of those, um, you know, you know, uh, ways that people are charging so that when you're going to be thinking for yourself and making a decision for yourself of who to work with and how to remunerate them while you're also getting value from the service, um, you know, it, it will make it a whole lot easier for you to make that decision. All right. So if, if you don't know how it all works, all is not lost. All right. Um, I've done a bit of thinking about this and with the clients that we work with, um, we, you know, we have come up with usually three ways in which we are sort of helping people navigate, um, you know, this whole online space. So I'm going to be giving you sort of a comprehensive rundown of how much, um, you know, SEO services should cost maybe on average. All right. So let's just have a peek on the numbers. At first glance, you will find there are people on Fiverr or on other freelance websites that are charging anywhere between $100 to $150 per hour, okay? But, however, a few SEO agencies are now charging by the hour these days. So you want to be careful what it is that you're actually going to be receiving when somebody says they're charging you per hour, what it is that they're actually doing, all right? So, because like I said, a few uh, freelancers and agencies are actually charging uh, by the hour these days. So in fact, most agencies are actually charging on a recurring monthly fee, otherwise known as a retainer. So these retainers may run from between $500 to an upwards of $2,000 per month. It just really depends on what um, it is that you're going to be receiving. Now, 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 you know, now that you know a little bit about the small numbers that uh, people are charging and you now sort of have an understanding of what it is that you're going to be charging, you're going to be paying. I want you to also shift your mind and start looking at SEO as a way of actually buying 
customers, all right? As a business person, your job is to make sure you continuously are investing within the business and the customers that you're going to be receiving is a means of investment. So SEO is also part and parcel of that investment that you're doing towards your business as the traffic that's going to come to your website is going to convert. And when they do convert, they now become customers. So you need to know those numbers of what it is that it actually costs you to acquire a customer or how much is the lifetime value of that customer and how much are you willing and able or prepared to pay to buy that customer. So um, if you've got any questions, put them in the comments below. Um, I'm supposing this thing is showing live in so many different places right now, either on YouTube or on Facebook. Just leave us a like and let me know um, if all of this is being valuable for you. So now that we've mentioned that some people want to be paid hourly and uh, some people want to be paid uh, monthly. I'm going to talk about the modality that we use at Live Long Digital, which is a monthly retainer. OK, so generally this sort of model sort of leans towards a long term relationship between the agency itself and the customer. And you have to be prepared for this because when the agency then outlays um you know, all the work that they're going to be doing throughout this, um, you know, this relationship, they would maybe plan ahead as much as six months because there are certain things that need to be done periodically, um, especially the whole um, indexing of website, which which should be done at a minimum two, two weeks per month, just so that Google doesn't look at, um, you know, you constantly indexing your website as spam. All right. So, for a lot of businesses, this will be a best option. And if you would actually look at it, maybe this period that we're in is only just going to last a couple of weeks or it's only just going to last a month or so. So if you've already paid, um, you know, your monthly subscription, you might um, have somebody working on your website. And by the time this whole thing is finished, you already have a business that's profitable and enjoyable and your customers can now find you. So this monthly subscription for us, it's the best option. And I also see from the clients that we work with, it's also a really good option for them um, if they're looking for practical hands-off experience where the agency would actually now start taking care of all the majority of the SEO efforts, you know, um, you know, like all the link building, all the content creation, et cetera, et cetera. Because if you're going to be middling or fiddling with the agency, um, they might just stand back and not be accountable for the results only because you've been meddling, um, you know, with, um, with their operations. Okay. But this model also doesn't come without its downsides because typically when somebody is paying a monthly retainer, it features a really long commitment. So you need to find out is your business seasonal or are you going to be needing to be found all throughout the whole year? Because most of the times for results to actually start coming through, you need a period between three to six months. You know what I mean? So sometimes some people would ask you to sign a contract. We don't, however, do contracts. We really don't want to tie down people uh, just in case things like this happen and they have no um, escape route. Then on the other hand, it's, it's really valuable for SEO agencies as it allows them to really expand and take the time to actually do their work without any disturbances or being afraid that there's going to be, um, you know, no income coming in based on the fact that maybe the client is not going to pay, um, et cetera. So, but also at the same time, this could result in you as a client being stuck with an agency that you're not currently happy with. So like I said, typical monthly costs is within the period, uh, the range of say 500 um, five hundred dollars to about two thousand per month. It really depends on um the arrangement that you have with your agency. And sometimes some people have seasonal products, and they might just want maybe a one-time uh, project to be done on their business. So, um, if you find that recurring costs are not your thing, and you 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 can't keep track of hours, or you can't estimate you know, the work that has been done or all of that is just too confusing for you to understand. Maybe a project best model might be the one that could um, help you out. So basically this uh, model is for businesses that have, maybe you've got a detailed need or you've got just specific events that need to happen at specific times, or you've got specific needs within your business. 
you know, and, and you already have a good handle of your SEO requirements. You already know what it is that needs to be happening. And you already have maybe a solid strategy in, in place that just maybe SEO will just push you across, um, you know, the line for you to be um, to be found. So you might think that just bringing in some sort of temporary help um, on board may help you execute an already existing objective. So this might work for other people to do sort of one-off projects. So maybe you might want just link building done, or maybe you want to go on a content assault, something like that, you know, but there's also downsides to this option. For one, it's easy to get ripped off because you don't actually know what it is that you're going to be getting. And some people might just fix a bandaid on something that is actually going to be, um, you know, you know, uh, long-term uh, problems. So if you've got little experience working with, um, you know, other SEO companies and it, it might just become murky to actually understand what it is that you're getting for this one-time project, you know what I mean? And then SEO, like I said, is always a, a moving target. And, um, you know, for, for other people, they might just quickly do certain things, um, you know, that might give you problems in the end, all right? So it's easy to then pay a lot more trying to fix up problems that somebody um, had, you know, done as a quick fix, you know, sort of mechanism, you know? And um, once the project scope has been set in stone, any changes to the milestones uh, or any pivoting might actually result in additional costs. So you might be then asked to pay a lot more than you would have projected if you wanted to do, um, you know, that one-off project. So you want to be careful. Is the one-off project going towards those two things that I mentioned, the optimization, which is letting Google understand what is it that you do, who you do it for, and how um, you can actually um, be found when your customers are searching for you. And then is it also working towards your authority? And authority basically means um, does Google understand or trust that you are the right kind of person with the right kind of uh, service products or activities that people are searching for online? Okay. So if you're watching this um, on Facebook, just leave us a comment below. If you've got any questions, let me know. I see Sally has just tuned in. Thank you so much. And um, yeah, hopefully um, you guys are staying safe and you are building your businesses because, hey, I'll tell you something. This whole thing is not going to last um, very long. And, um, you want to make sure that by the time this is finished and it's over, you are ready and you're willing and able to uh, take on whatever business is coming your way so that you can compensate for the downtime, um, that you might've been going through, et cetera, et cetera. So the last uh, bit of what I'm going to be talking about is maybe you are going to be, uh, handling this, on an hourly basis or on demand, which I don't recommend, but hey, you know what? Um, you know, we, we, we all have sort of different uh, needs depending on whatever it is that's happening within our businesses. Now, what if you could get, um, you know, a grasp of your SEO, you already know what you're needing to do and all you need is just occasional help, you know, a tweak here and there or just some sort of advice that you can just pay uh, and once off and then that'll be it. So one of the best options that you could do is look for somebody who's really good at what they're doing. All right. Either they're, uh, they're a freelancer or they're a consultant or they're an agency that would then help you for just a few hours when and when you need them. Okay. So this is very good for when you're budget limited, but also you understand and you know what it is that you need to be doing for your business. All right. Because on demand or SEO, you know, has um, is, is a tremendous asset for those that are looking to manage and execute their own campaigns, but they don't need the constant third party involvement, et cetera, et cetera. Because for us, we can't really guarantee the result if we're not fully in charge, um, you know, of the, of the campaign. We never know what it is that you're going to be doing on the other end or what it is that you would undo when we have, uh, you know, put in a strategy in place. So, with um, on demand, some people, you know, you 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 expect a really good degree of transparency in terms of where your money is actually going towards because you're only going or hiring somebody for a specific period or a specific time, and you actually know what time has been spent because you're giving them access to your website, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So you still have full control of how much effort is going to be going in any particular area. Like I said, either the optimization side or just the authority side of the website to make sure that 
you know, you, you are being found where your uh, customers are searching, you know, and, and your SEO strategy is um, actually going through. And additionally, it also provides, you know, for predictable costs. Everybody's going to be looking at their wallet uh, right about this time. So it is a good time for you to make sure that you've got all the costs, um, you know, looked and after and, um, you know, you're not just paying unnecessary bills for things that you're not going to be needing. All right. So typically, like I said, an hourly cost for this could be between 100 to 150, depending on the consultant. So that should, um, you know, give you a ballpark figure of how much you should expect to pay if you're going to be doing, um, you know, one-off uh, activities, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. So the question that you might have right now is, um, Hey, should I hire an agency or a freelancer or how should I navigate this whole thing? I mean, it's no secret that an average agency would charge higher prices because they've got more resources, they've got more teams to be looking after, so they've got more overheads and they have more clients and more experience, okay? So as opposed to freelance consultants or just, you know, run-of-the-mill SEO um, professionals, however, whether you should opt to work with an agency or an individual, it really depends entirely upon the scope of your strategy and your own budget, okay? So although a single consultant or an expert can help you with smaller projects, they only have so much time on their hands and they might be working with other clients. So you might not get the full gamut or the full attention that your um, website really needs. Whereas an agency generally has necessary resources in place to carry out, um, you know, um, larger projects, cheaper, better, faster. So you're guaranteed that within an agency, even if uh, there will be, we people are working remotely, everyone is in a position to actually, um, um, you know, do the work and you actually get, um, you know, the, the results. So the added costs are typically to offset the fact that, you know, you actually get to see the progress of your results and the efforts much faster than when you're hoping that somebody is going to show up, um, you know, especially if they're a one-man band, all right? So, and if they're a one-man band, guess what happens? You know, if they fall ill or maybe they don't have the capacity to be working from home, et cetera, et cetera, that means your work is being put on, on, on hold. So in addition to this, um, agencies are also able to offer more extensive breadth of services than what freelance consultants can do. So base your decision to choose either a freelancer or an agency first on your budget and how you really want to win in this game. So like I said, we help small businesses to develop a never ending chain of new businesses. And we do this by allowing small businesses to actually have access to their customers in the same way that big companies can. What we will do at Live Long Digital is show you how to dramatically increase your business revenues through strategic positioning within the marketplace, all right? So if you or somebody that you know is going through, um, you know, this whole uh, digital transition hardship, because it's not going to be easy for a lot of people and would like to start earning more money with less struggle. Let's have a chat or just comment below so that we can invite you to our community where we are literally, you know, rolling our sleeves and helping businesses, um, you know, to go through this uh, period of uncertain time, uh, especially when social distancing and really, really making sure that everybody is coming out a winner. Now, if you have enjoyed this video, please share this. All right, find two or three people that might uh, be struggling with their business and um, introduce them to me or um, have them come into our um, community. I'm going to put the uh, details of the community in the comments there so that you two can, um, uh, yeah, just jump on, um, you know, let us know what it is that you're doing. I've put, I've put the, um, the community uh, details at the bottom there. Just um, type in that community.livelongdigital.com.au. Um, let us know how we can help you. Let us know what it is that, um, um, you know, um, you're going through. And there are other services that we um, sort of have um, also as a business that I think would be really good for 
each and every one of us to look into the SEO content marketing, email marketing, and all of that stuff so that you too can have a business that's profitable and enjoyable. I really hope that you've um, enjoyed this show. I've just put it together. I think I should be doing more of these videos you know, just to make sure that everybody uh, is safe and sound. In the meantime, um, leave your comments below. Let me know how I can be of help. Um, and let's uh, come out of this as winners. Um, and let's focus on the future and how we can have businesses that are profitable and enjoyable. This has been Prosper. Thank you so much for your time. Share this video or connect with me in the comments. And um, yeah, let's start having businesses that are profitable and enjoyable. Bye for now.